Thank you. <clears throat> um, first of all, I'm trying to not use a microphone because there was a lot of echo before. So can you hear me in the back? Is this loud enough? A little louder. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to be louder. OK. Hi. Um, my name is Paul Meard. Uh, I am a lead iOS engineer at uh, Prolific Interactive. And today I'm going to talk about how we transitioned from Objective-C to Swift in the course of one year. Uh, it is Prolific's uh, Swift shift. So <laughs> the talk overview briefly, why did we switch to Swift? How did we do it? And try to answer the question, should you do it yourself if you haven't yet? Um, a little bit, oh, one more thing. This talk is not going to be too technical. Uh, it's more like a process kind of talk and trying to inspire you and maybe raise questions, which are going to be very welcome at the end. A little bit about ourselves. We are a, a mobile agency uh, based in Brooklyn and San Francisco. We make basically mobile apps and mobile websites. Um, we are 100 people, out of which uh, a team of 20 iOS engineers. So <clears throat> basically, we write a lot of iOS code. We have about eight concurrence projects. And um, that's what we use uh, as a combined experience for this talk today. Why did we switch? Um, why did we switch a year ago when to, uh, Swift 2.0 was announced by Apple? Why not earlier? Why not later? Uh, first of all, because we could afford it. We start new projects very often, and it was like kind of easy to do it at least on new projects. Because it felt like it was the right time, the language was more mature. And um, um, another thing is Swift is very modern. Objective-C was and is uh, over 30 years old. It was announced and put uh, in the world about 30 years ago, over 30 years ago. And another really big thing is Apple wants us to. They really, really want us to. And uh, basically, Swift is more like future-proof. Uh, we had been playing with Swift for, for a year already, just checking it out, and it felt like it was a very mature language. Regardless of the reasons, uh, when we decided to go for it, uh, just like everyone else, Swift felt <laughs> like a whole new world. So, the transition process. Let's talk a bit about that. Uh, here's a rough timeline of how things happened. In June last year, Swift 2.0 was announced by Apple and made open source. Um, as a team, we decided to change our mindset and become a lot swiftier. Uh, we started with uh, getting books, more than what Apple provided, and just extra books like uh, or release and stuff like that. We had the entire team in our dev talks, we have dev talks every, every week, in our blog posts, uh, include Swift uh, all over, uh, and stop just thinking Objective-C. Um, that was this one. Um, we also, by August, had a deadline, which was redoing our code test. So the way uh, we get hired at Prolific is we have to make a small app. Back then, and all 20 engineers in the team had been writing this app in Objective-C, the goal was to redo it in the course of two days and do it, obviously, full swift so that everybody would shift their mind and go into um, you know, getting to learn the language, basically. Um, <clears throat> by September, we wanted to start. I don't know if we wanted to or if it just happened. We had a new project starting, and it felt like the right time to go uh, all in swift and to make our very first real project only swift, not even considering Objective-C. Um, one more thing that was really helpful all over is by November, we had done all our code tests. Everybody was done. We put together groups of three uh, engineers from different levels, from senior to intern. And we just code reviewed each other, this same code test we, we, we did by, uh, in August, uh, talked about it together, uh, just reviewed like what was interesting in Swift, what did we do well, what was not, what was to avoid, and stuff like that. And um, th the second phase was regrouping and talking about it, and the third phase was regrouping all our thoughts together as a team. And out of that, along with um, this experience we had with our, with our first uh, All Swift project, we uh, regrouped on a weekly basis uh, 
as a sort of consortium of, Swift, of, of three iOS engineers and started working on our uh, style guide. So we announced and published in GitHub our own uh, Swift style guide. Maybe you have seen it. We have a few stars in GitHub. Uh, it's open source. Uh, it is um, based off our experience, as I said, writing these tests, uh, talking about it as a team, and writing few apps. Um, where, uh, pull requests are welcome, obviously, and uh, issues as well, so feel free to contribute if you're interested. Today, uh, just a few numbers and insights. We have about 12 apps uh, of experience. Uh, five of them are full Swift. Uh, we have been developing on all four devices, um, and the other seven are uh, hybrid projects. So have a mix of Swift and Objective-C. Um, so most we have in a hybrid projects about 20% Swift. So it's not that much, but I'm going to talk about it a bit later. We also have been doing a lot of open source. Swift brought up uh, that. We wanted to go for it, and uh, we have a bunch of open source projects. That uh, There is a link in the slides later on. Um, so about a third of all our code, active code, uh, is Swift. Um, this includes the hybrid projects and um, the, the full Swift. Um, we also did a quick survey amongst our team <laughs> and asked people <laughs> how comfortable do you feel writing Swift today. So this is a year later. We just did it about two weeks ago. Do you feel like you can't write anything, or do you feel like Chris Ladner and you could like just, you know, <laughs> decide what is the next Swift going to look like? So that was an animal survey, and it looks like people in the team are really comfortable writing Swift, meaning four and fives, or yeah, I can write advanced Swift. I feel comfortable with the language. It has no secrets for me. So most of the team, the bigger portion of the team, feel really, really good today about Swift, which is a great win. Um, not everything went well, obviously. I'm going to just point out a few difficulties we encountered on our way. Um, the first one is dependencies. When you transition to a 100% Swift project, and like us, we have been working for years on Objective-C projects, um, it is really hard to just get rid of all your third-party dependencies, whether it's uh, open source libraries, open source or not, whatever, uh, tools, uh, continuous integration related tools, uh, we, we had to just be like, okay, what do we do with all of these? Do we just try to rewrite it? Do we try to find a better alternative that is 100% Swift? Is this mature enough? Uh, should we just keep it as an Objective-C library and include it in our 100% Swift code? So we, depending, the, the, the answer is basically it depends. We don't have a real answer for that. Depends what the dependency is. If it's really low level, it's going to be really hard to integrate, uh, obviously, Swift and Objective-C together. If it's uh, some, something at a networking layer or, or um, let's say, a JSON a sterilization library, it, you should find an alternative or rewrite one. Uh, otherwise, if it's very high level, why not having this kind of hybrid uh, behind the scenes? Another big one is uh, the learning curve. So this one, the bigger your team is, uh, the bigger the learning curve might be, although it's, it's harder it might be to just get everybody on the same page in the same amount of time. So whatever your level is, when you start at level zero with a new language, you must ask yourself questions such as, how do I do a full loop? <laughs> even if like uh, Chris Jones, <laughs> even if like Chris Jones, you are a senior iOS engineer. <laughs> <laughs> he asked himself this question, but today, uh, don't worry about him, he's really good. He, He's one of the fives. So you start somewhere, and <laughs> over the course of a year in the learning curve, you get somewhere, which is awesome. So a few things. Uh, obviously, there will be natural learners. Uh, back to Chris, he started with Swift 1.0, I think, maybe 1.2. Um, he didn't wait for this process to be happening to learn Swift. But some people will not have the time or the bandwidth, and you need to find a way to bring everybody together into this, uh, this learning process. So the learning will be different whether you are a senior engineer with uh, a lot of experience with a lot of languages. Um, and that's where mentorship gets into the game, like uh, having people with a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience 
uh, theoretical with other languages uh, they can learn Swift very quickly and helping each other pair programming uh, this kind of stuff was really helpful for us like just to gain the experience as a team um, but whatever the learning curve is and whatever you want to do the best thing that happened to us is to just jump in not wait for the good time to jump in but just do it and learning on the way there is enough resources there is enough people around you there is this meetups and dev talks everything is good enough at this moment to just go for it no more excuses um, another difficulty uh, this one has been uh, <laughs> this one has been one with or without swift xcode we could consider it broken in some ways uh, Swift didn't fix anything. It actually made <laughs> things a lot worse. Uh, unfortunately, like, especially over the course of the past year, it gets better, I think, but the compiler had a lot of issues. It would, it would be crashing even more. Compile time would take longer. Um, stuff like refactoring, still today is anything. You can refactor in C and Objective-C code, but you cannot refactor Swift code. That's weird. Uh, hopefully, Xcode 8 is going to fix some of these issues. So these are the stuff happening, you know, Xcode crashes all the time, uh, code formatting, uh, syntax highlighting just disappears for no reason. So, lots of fun. So, uh, to the big question, should you write Swift? So, we'll try to uh, decompose this question into two different uh, questions. One is, what about I'm running a brand new project? So the answer, the obvious answer, hopefully, especially in this meetup, is yes. Uh, do it. Don't wait any longer. Uh, all our engineers uh, back in the survey and just asking questions around were em em emphatic. Emphatic, it was just a big yes. You will be glad you did. Uh, there is no real reason to just hold yourself. Um, Swift is more performant, more modern. Uh, you will gain speed in development uh, after all the learning curve is behind you. All the long term, dev definitely development speed, meaning uh, the time spent developing the project. Uh, Swift is obviously safer with type safety, less bugs, um, and, and it's future proof. Apple really wants us to go for it. So, yeah. Uh, just a quick quote to summarize that. Without Swift, the app would have been harder to build in four weeks. The increased power Swift gave us was more than enough to compensate for the time the learning curve took away. I know, what a powerful, powerful quote. This uh, Thibaut is, is here, sitting over there, if you, want to, uh, <laughs> if you want to ask him questions about that, he will be available after the talk. So basically, we wrote an Apple TV app in four weeks. It was his first Swift app, I think. And uh, yeah, it, it went really well, uh, it went really fast, and uh, maybe in Objective-C, he wouldn't have been able to do it so fast. Another thing, we run amongst all our code base uh, using a tool, um, calculating how many lines of code we have per file. Uh, obviously, Swift is a lot less robust, but not but also like yeah, basically like this. We, we went down 56% average on similar features in hybrid projects, for example, between Objective C and Swift. So that's another thing, uh, a lot of gain in terms of development speed and uh, and just writing and readability as well. Um, so, yeah, when we, another thing really interesting that happened uh, is um, Swift kind of gave us wings, I think. Basically, we were learning, we were starting fresh, and we were like, okay, let's just start uh, back from the, the whiteboard and be like, let's see what we can do, not only with a new language, but also with architectures. Uh, back in Objective-C, we had been doing a lot of projects, and most of our projects were based on the MVC architecture, um, the massive one as well, even though we were trying to get rid of that, and we found a lot of ways to get around and have some sort of clean code, but we had never really gone as far as going MVVM or re uh, yeah, using Reactive Cocoa, for example. We were interested in it, but we didn't feel ready. The learning curve was too steep and it was not even, you know, there's other issues like you didn't look that good and stuff like that. So basically, I don't know if it's directly related or not, I would say yes. Uh, as since we started this new project in Swift, we basically went through these architectures and today we have projects using all of them. 
not obviously the same project, but we have one project using MVVM, actually two, uh, one currently being developed, which is in the clean architecture, and even Viper, currently developing an app that is supposed to be reusable and, and duplicated somehow with different um, UI, uh, but the same kind of feature set. So we're using Viper for that, and everything is going really well. Very interesting. So the language promotes uh, more than Objective-C, like different paradigms uh, to object-oriented programming, functional programming, protocol-oriented uh, concepts. Um, so like we have, we have access to value types, generics, and all this stuff is really, really powerful and it feels, feels great. Um, the syntax obviously makes things more readable, especially functional style. Uh, it's really hard to read in Objective-C. And um, back, I was saying that before, like, Generally speaking, when you start fresh, uh, you look at your old habits, you try to see what did they do, what did they do that before, what are the alternatives, and it's a great, great way to just go for it all in. Uh, so again, when you start a new project, just uh, do it in Swift, please. So what about legacy projects? This one is a bit harder to answer. Um, the reactions, Internally, like back to this survey and stuff, like we're more mixed. We, we're not sure, basically. The answer is yes. <laughs> um, so the things like, <laughs> things like the type system, type safety, optionals will definitely help you even if you have Swift and Objective-C mixed up. You will be able to use some of the advanced features, some, some of the features of Swift but not all of them. Uh, if you inter in interact between Objective-C and Swift code, you won't be able to use some of the really cool advanced features, uh, such as protocol extensions or value types, and you will feel limited very quickly, which is obviously an issue. And uh, another issue, if you go all in anyways and you start refactoring your code and rewriting from Objective-C to Swift, eventually, maybe you will have a uh, 100-person code written in Swift but because of the process, you will end up with more some sort of hybrid Objective Swift code, Objective C code with a Swift syntax more than pure Swift code. So it is kind of tricky to, especially with, with big, big projects, to just go, go for it uh, because you might actually feel limited and you feel uh, and, and regret it somehow on the long term and feel like, oh, I should have just rewrote it. <sighs> Another quote. Modernizing the project is very important. You can't live on Objective-C forever. At some point, Apple is going to kill you. <laughs> so Objective-C is not going anywhere, at least not anytime soon. But uh, it, this is from John, who uh, is working on hybrid projects right now. And he loves Swift, and he wishes he could write only in Swift. But uh, even though he's not really happy with some of the uh, concessions he had to make. He still thinks uh, Swift is a good uh, opportunity to just, by, just by learning the language, it's a good, good, good thing to do. And also, I don't know, we, no, nobody knows what Apple is going to do, but uh, there is a good chance all the new features, all the new cool stuff are going to be Swift only, and uh, more and more you're going to feel limited on the long term. So basically, yeah, maybe time is running out for Objective-C, so keep that in mind. Uh, few integration strategies, stuff we have tried. It's not specifically answers to that main question. Like, it's not maybe not what you should do, but it's options you have. Uh, you can integrate uh, vertically, like basically write an entire feature in full Swift and use the interoperability between the languages. Uh, it will allow you to take advantage of full Swift features. Uh, and it's actually a really good option. Um, start with the lowest, lowest level, um, stuff like writing the lowest layer of code in Swift so you don't get stuck on the higher levels writing some sort of interfaces between Objective-C and Swift. That is uh, an interesting option, but it requires a lot more thoughts, architecture, maybe rethinking, and uh, it is kind of dangerous as well. If your code is not tested enough, you might just end up with more bugs than before you started. So it is tricky to just go that route unless you feel really confident and you have a lot of tests, I would say. That's my opinion. Um, and the easiest, the last one, is refactor as you go. Just grab a file, grab a feature, look at it, try to see how you can refactor it. It's a really good way also to 
clean up your code uh, to, yeah, to just get rid of the mess, basically. And uh, yet, back to what I was saying before, you will not be able to use a language that is full of. So it's always uh, this kind of like question uh, will always be there, which is, am I doing the right thing? Should I do it for real or should I just try something different, which is going all Swift from scratch? Um, so the main takeaways we have for this year of transition. Um, the first one is switch if you can. Basically, that's a really good thing to do. Either write a brand new project, rewrite an existing one, if you can afford it, if you have the right team and uh, enough time for it, definitely do it. Um, the hardest part of switching, at least for us, was to really, we are 20 engineers again, so putting the, the entire team together in the same mindset and transitioning the entire team in the same amount of time uh, was definitely a big challenge. So I tried to explain a little bit our process at the beginning. It helped for sure. Uh, but even today, some people are behind and we're trying to do our best uh, to have everybody on the same page and uh, being able to catch up so that nobody is left behind. So put some attention to this part, if you go for it. And to the last part, on a brand new project, uh, it will be worth the effort. Uh, you will gain time in terms of development speed and stuff like that, and you will like it, but you might feel, f sorry. I was talking about the last one. You might be frustrated, so this was uh, for a legacy project. For a brand new project, definitely, definitely go for it. Um, yeah, all that to say, see you later, Objective-C. <laughs> <laughs> a few things before I end my presentation. We have a blog. Um, I wrote an article. It was published today. It's exactly about this presentation. We don't really, I don't really talk about the very last part, but everything else is more detailed, so if you're interested, please uh, can read it and you can contact me at any time. If you have questions about how we did it, I would be happy to answer. And there is a couple more uh, blogs, posts that explain uh, what is our engineering culture like, and it's all kind of related. This helps behind the scenes to get a, a, a great transition. I was talking before about our open source projects. I will share the slides, by the way. So this is just a few things we've been working on in the past year. Uh, we didn't do that much open source before. We do a lot now. So another really great advantage of switching. He gave us a lot of ideas, and we, 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 we just obvious, hopefully giving back to the world. If anything is interesting to you, please contribute. Everything is open source on GitHub and open to pull requests. Um, and one last thing, we also can talk more technical. We, uh, Chris Jones, back to Chris Jones. He's gonna be talking uh, in two weeks at iOS Soho about advanced topics in Swift and Objective-C generics. Uh, so if you're here and not at the WWDC, basically if you're unlucky, uh, <laughs> please join us. Thank you.